Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus A330 pilot and in today's video I'm going to explain the water and waste system of the Airbus A320 to you. Now this one comes in light of the recent release of the GSX water and waste services so I will kind of put everything together for you over here, explain the system and detail a little bit about the A320 specifics. So we're going to start with the water system because that is the one that requires most crew attention and that is the only one of the two that actually requires cockpit crew attention. The waste system is basically mostly for cabin crews. The only thing pilots have to do with it is that we would kick the ramp agents back in case the services don't arrive on time and we are afraid of getting a delay. Now. Let's start with a couple of basics over here. So the water and waste system of the A320 distributes the portable water to the toilets and the galleys, disposes wastewater and stores toilet wastes. Now the latter two are rather important but we'll get to that later on in the video. So starting with the portable water system we have a 200 liter water tank in the aircraft that is located just in front of the wings behind the forward cargo hold. You can't really see it from the outside but it's located roughly somewhere over here. Now the capacity is 200 liters and that gives you a kinda good idea of how often you actually need to refill this and you normally need to refill it around about every four to six flight hours depending on the length of the sectors. Remember to refill it proactively because you really don't want to run out. However it is in most airlines allowed to fly without water in the system if you have sufficient water bottles loaded so that the passengers can be supplied and if the length of a flight is too long. Now let's just about head up here and we'll talk about where to find the controls for the portable water system. So we are gonna go inside here and we have our forward attendant panel located right over here. Now on the on one of the um, different pages over here you will actually find the water indication that's going to be in the top over here and that is something that you would have to submit before each flight to your company so that they can take the correct weight of the water on board the aircraft into account for the load sheet. Now there is a little trick for that inside the cockpit as well. Unfortunately Phoenix don't seem to simulate it but in the real one you can find that in the MCDU as well if you don't go into the FMGC or stuff but you have a couple more menus down here and in those you can actually look the exact quantities up as well but in most of the cases it's just easiest simply to have a look at the flight attendant panel or just to ask one of the flight attendants what the current um, portable water on board is. Now, the system itself works in a rather simplistic way. So you've got the water tank located roughly somewhere over here in uh, front of the wings. The water tank is pressurized by bleed air and that is used in order to um, pump that water to the galleys and lavatories alike. So the same tank supplies water to the front over here for of course the toilet, the um, coffee maker up here and of course the same thing for the back of the aircraft. Now from here on we can move on then. So what happens with the water that's actually been used? Now water that's been used and that is either disposed through the sink over here or of course through the sink in the toilet is going to be disposed of the aircraft through drain masts that are located below the fuselage. Now if we go down the ladder over here then we will find that rather quickly. Now lots of things down here on the aircraft. Today I'm going to introduce you to two of them and that is the drain masts. You will see those over here, one in the front and you can basically tell it's a water drain mast because of the hot label on it. There is a second one located in the back of the aircraft where we are going to go right now. Now why is there a hot level or label? Well quite easy. Remember, it's water that you're disposing of, or liquids at least. You're flying in minus 56 degrees in your cruise, so you definitely don't want that stuff to freeze on your aircraft. The, sec the second mast is located just over here, so that's where the waste water comes out. Now, the stuff that goes into the toilet, however, is <laughs> not just disposed over here. Just remember, you're standing on the ground somewhere and all of a sudden something hits you from the top. 
no, we'll not, we'll not think about that. Um, any of the water that is disposed over here is going to vaporize before it reaches the ground. So you don't need to worry about being hit by anything when you're on the ground. So the waste that comes through the toilet is saved in a tank that's located in the... Um, that's located in the aft part of the aircraft and that tank basically carries 170 liters so that's the capacity 170 liters and this can be drained through a panel on the back of the aircraft and that panel is located just over here next to the outflow valve so that's the toilet service panel over here and whenever the tank approaches a level where it is uncertain that you can still use the toilets normally on the uh, next sector, that is when we would call for the waste services in order to empty the tanks. So how often do we actually need to do that? Well, of course, it depends on the kind of operation you do. But if you're flying short haul, about after every four sectors, if you're doing longer flights like four hours, five hours, then you might really want to consider doing it after the first sector already, latest after the second. And that's how we use the systems. Now, an Airbus wouldn't be an Airbus if there wouldn't be computers involved. So just to give you a quick idea, when the flush button on the toilet is pressed, the flush control unit, yes, that is an actual name of a computer in an Airbus, is going to send a signal to the vacuum system controller, which ultimately is going to control the, um, which is ultimately going to supply the vacuum pressure needed to move the flush control valve, controlled by the flush control unit. Hey, that thing is called FCU in short. Well, we'll leave that part alone. Now, last but not least, Something that is not so important for your simulated operation, but very important for the real-world operation, is the, note, optional manual shut-off valves. So, more often than you'd like it, your water systems are going to run over, and either the sinks or the toilets are going to run over. That stuff happens on airbuses, believe me. Oh yeah, tell me again that becoming a cabin crew is a dream job, huh? All right, so um, when you're running into problems like that, there is a manual shutoff valve located below the um, sinks in the cabins, but you also have one in the lavatories. For example, over here, we've got the water shutoff valve. If you flick that one, then all your water is going to be shut off to that um, galley over here. And if the water ever keeps running, that's what you want to do. All right. And that is a basic look at the system. So, just a quick reminder then. We do have 200 liters of fresh water, 170 liters waste tank. The fluid levels can be seen on the flight attendant control panel. And in case anything is wrong with the system and the flow won't stop, you have manual shutoff valves located next to each unit. Going to the outside of the aircraft, we start at the back over here and we have two drain masts for uh, wastewater that's coming from the sinks, one at the back, one at the front, and those are heated so that they don't freeze up. It still happens though. Now, then we have the wastewater servicing valve in the aft right of the aircraft, and we've got the um, portable water, so the fresh water service panel, on the left side of the aircraft directly adjacent. And that is a very basic and hopefully not too technical look at the waste and water system on the Airbus A320. I hope that you found this one interesting. Let me know in the comments below. And with all of that out of the way, thank you very much for watching. I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. And if you really love what I'm doing on this channel, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you very much for enduring this rather shitty topic. And I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.